All right, we got a 93 or 94 Geo Prism in here. Basically the same thing as Toyota Corolla. It's got a uh, bad wheel bearing, so we'll go through the process of changing that out real quick. All right, you can see here the wheel's pretty loose. Oh, that's picking it up. Not the worst one I've ever seen, but uh, you can definitely move the wheel back and forth quite a bit. All right, so I don't have the OTC hug grappler yet, so uh, I don't do these while they're on the car. What I'm gonna, what I do is pull the whole uh, hub assembly out. So you want to uh, <coughs> grab the two 17 mils behind here that hold this uh, cover bracket on, and we'll pull that off. So that'll be uh, the two 17s. Pull those off. They're back here, and then we'll suspend this out of the way and uh, remove the rotor, and then we'll take the axle, tie rod, and ball joint out. All right, so hang your caliper up on your spring there, and then uh, go ahead and pull your rotor off. And then uh, we'll straighten this back out and get this uh, axle nut off. And you got the three bolts on the ball joint and one on the tie rod, and, th and then, of course, these two. And the uh, spindle will come right out. All right, 30 mil uh, axle socket, and then this should come right out. Wow, that was really loose. Kind of push on it and make sure it'll go in, which it does, so we can take this off. So uh, we'll go for these two next, and then the ball joint, and then the tie rod. All right, so you got 17 mil on this uh, tie rod. Just take it loose and take a big sledge and hit it right here until it pops out. Then you have uh, two nuts and a bolt for the ball, lower ball joint. Just take those out with the 17 mil. And then uh, this does have a speed sensor. I didn't notice that at first. So we'll take the speed sensor out. And then we'll have those two 19 mils right here for the strut. And this whole assembly can come out. And then when I took the axle out, the hub actually fell out. So we might just have to get a whole new hub and bearing and everything for this. I thought it was just going to be bearings. Uh, but it's a lot worse than what I thought it was originally. So we might have to look and see what we can do with this. But I got a feeling this hub is shot too. So anyway, speed sensor and then the strut. And then this hub will come. This assembly will come out and we can work on it. All right, so this job took a little bit of a turn. Um, you know, the hub fell apart when I took it out. So it needs a new hub and new bearings, both the bearings and the shield. And then the uh, the uh, speed sensor is seized into the hub right here. So uh, just to buy the parts would be the speed sensor and the bearings and all that would be uh, close to 220 bucks for this car. And this is a 93 Prism with quite a bit of miles on. It's pretty rough. So what we ended up doing was going to the junkyard and getting a whole new hub assembly for 40 bucks. So my original intent was to show you how to press these in and out with a press. Um, but it just doesn't make financial sense to do that on this particular car uh, to replace everything on it. Um, he's just trying to get it to pass inspection and drive it. Uh, there's not a lot of money behind all this. So in this situation, um, you know, I would have liked to have been able to show the press in and press out procedure and all that, but uh, it's not gonna happen with this one. So I'll just show you putting it back together just to save the video kind of. Uh, if you were gonna do the bearing, if your hub was in better shape, everything was in better shape, you're gonna do it yourself. Um, you, could, you got two options. You can press it out, get a kit, press it out if you got a small press. Usually I just use this little press here. Uh, but since we're not doing it on this one, uh, like I said, we're, we're just we're going to skip that. But uh, if you have a small press or you can get the bearing press, you can do it. Otherwise, you, if you have a local machine shop, they usually do it for about 30 bucks, And they'll uh, press in and out your bearings and everything. So anyway, uh, I, wasn't, I would like to show that, but we're not doing it on this one. So we'll just go back over to the car. I got one at the junkyard, the whole assembly. That seemed like it was in pretty good shape. And we'll film throwing that back on the car. All right, so this is the one uh, we got at the junkyard. It's the full assembly. It's got the ball joint on it, the speed sensor. Uh, the bearings, everything look pretty decent on it. Um, so we're just going to pop this back on. This was 40 bucks at the junkyard for, for everything. So like I said, this car is in primer. And... Uh, it's not exactly a high dollar car and with just being the parts at 225 and then the labor and everything you're talking close to a 400 dollar job on a car it's probably only worth about five or six hundred bucks so this will save him some money and get him back on the road to pass inspection 
So what we're just going to do now is just set this up onto the lower ball joint and strut here and start bolting it back together. All right, I got the three, uh, the two nuts and the one bolt for the uh, lower ball joint, 17 mil. We'll just pop those back in real quick and that'll attach this hub to the lower control arm here. Then we'll slide the axle in and then put the uh, strut bolts in. So, uh, hit the wrong button on the camera here. So these three will go in next and then uh, we'll slide the axle in. Maybe put a little lube on it, kind of lube it up and then slide the axle in. All right, so once you get the bottom ball joint in, you got a three uh, 17s, put, slide your axle in to the hub and then we'll push it up against the strut here and put those bolts in. And then all you really got left is the brakes and the tie rod. So we'll uh, slide these in. Oh yeah, the, the speed sensor, which goes up behind this wheel well here. You have to pull this down a little bit to get to the connector. So uh, anyway, yeah, we'll put this in next and then uh, hit the axle, tie rod, brakes, speed sensor. All right, so you got the two 19 bolts, uh, 19 millimeter bolts. So just take an end on this, open it on this and uh, go ahead and run it down. All right, use a 30 millimeter axle socket, tighten this down, torque it down to spec. Put your castle nut back on there, or, uh, dust protector and uh, cotter pin. And we'll put this rotor back on and put the brakes back on and tie rod and speed sensor. All right, so hopefully you had your, hang your uh, brakes hanging up from here. Go ahead and put those back on. You got the two 17 millimeter in the back uh, to hold this entire unit onto the rotor. So that's all back in. I'm going to do the speed sensor next. On these, the speed sensor goes up to this mount on the uh, strut and it goes up behind this fender well. And uh, I just went ahead and took, there's about uh, five or six 10 millimeter uh, bolts. And it's back here. And this is where it plugs into. And then the, the other, and the speed sensor comes up through here and goes kind of behind this uh, wiring harness here. And then hooks in right here so just be aware of that if you have if you end up changing the whole hub and it comes with a speed sensor the problem i had with the other speed sensor is like i said it was uh rusted into this hub and the speed sensor alone i think was either 139 or 159 and uh that's kind of what the deal breaker was uh, as far as going to the junkyard and getting this entire assembly for 40 bucks versus buying a new hub buying all the new bearings seals and then uh, the speed sensor you're looking at, I think I priced it out about two, 225 250 to O'Reilly's. So this whole hub is 40 bucks. and it's in good shape. So anyway, we'll go ahead and uh, mount the speed sensor here. And then there's a bolt right here uh, in, the, in the fender well that it bolts, that this bolts to. And then it goes up behind this plastic, plug it in and then put your bolts back in for your fender well. All right, so the speed sensor's back up in there and hooked up. I got the fender well uh, back in. It's all self-explanatory. Tie rod's in. So all that's left now is the wheel. So like I said, this video, I was going to show pressing the bearing in now, but it just didn't work out with this car. Uh, but this is pretty much procedure. I take it apart, and uh, if you're going to take it to the machine shop to have them do it or put it in your own press or whatever you got going on, uh, this is basically how you tear it down to get to that point. Um, a little disappointed I wasn't able to press it out, but uh, with all the issues with this hub and the bearings and everything, it just would have been too much money for this particular car. So anyway, I'm going to end it here, uh, and we'll catch you on the next one.